Hi everyone, welcome to lecture four. Today what we're going to be looking at is daily hassles as sources of stress. Um, this is part of um, the stress topic and this is a continuation from the first part we looked at which was life changes and we looked at two key studies, studies there. So um, we've got another two studies, Boutier and Gervais as well. And again, what we focus on is what you need to know to pass your examination. So none of the hefty stuff. This is straightforward format to get an A for psychology AS. OK, so first thing you need to know, you need to be able to define or know what daily hassles and daily uplifts are. So it's got the definitions there and make sure when you're, for example, ask, answering the examination questions, you use examples if need be. For example, daily hassles could be, for example, missing a bus or getting stuck in traffic. Yeah, the short term things that we can really bug us or annoy us. OK, um, and in daily uplifts, are, I don't know, for example, getting an A for your coursework or um, I don't know, somebody telling you how beautiful you are. OK, so those are things that make us feel quite nice that can happen during the course of the day. Um, now, the reason why psychologists decide to study daily hassles and uplifts is because some um, psychologists, they believe that it's these incidences that happen on the course of the day rather than big life changes, which we looked at in lectures three. So rather than the big um, life changes that happen, it's these little things that happen throughout the day that really have the most effect on us, which may inadvertently cause us the most stress. So um, just to um, look at what type of scale, remember, a simple way to think of a scale is like a questionnaire. So what we have is the hassles and uplift scale. And um, this is just an example. Obviously, the scale has like 43 items or questions. And um, for example, um, on this side, you can have your hassles. On this side, you're going to have your uplifts. So for example, your children, some people will say, oh, um, they uplift me. So they're three, for example, or um, and then put one for this one, maybe one or two, whichever one. So you work down the scale, basically. So that's how the hassles and uplift scales work. Just to, just to clarify, it is quantitative data. That is, it is numerical data that they're going to be gener um, um, generating, which is going to help us when we start to evaluate um, later on. So no qualitative, no words, no nothing like that. It's all quantitative with these scales. Right, so the first one, Boutier. I hope I'm saying that right. It's um, French. And um, what um, what he or she um, what they done was they were looking at how daily hassles how they could, how it can affect the mental health of students, and what they looked at they looked at um, first year psychology students um, in a French university, and what they done they gave them two skills they gave them the um, hassles and uplift skills, and they gave them a depression questionnaire. And what they were going to do, they're just going to correlate the two together to see if you've reported. So it's a self-report. If you reported quite a bit of um, hassles, if it correlates to you um, um, reporting symptoms of depression. OK, so the findings here. And so remember, aims, procedures, findings, conclusions, criticisms or limitations. So population validity, very easy. Keep it straight. Keep it simple. Um, French first year psychology students and the strength, the use of a questionnaire. So I'm using the use of a questionnaire as a strength because they are quite um, easy to analyze and you can draw conclusions and you can compare data and those kind of stuff. So learn these studies as well. Yeah, very, very important. And then you've got Gervais, um, 2005. Again, dates are not too important. So if you're not one to remember dates and stuff, then don't stress over it. But um, Gervais was looking again, they both looked at daily hassles and uplifts and they were looking at job performance um, in nurses. So what they've done, they asked nurses to keep a diary and that is more or less um, do, um, generating qualitative data and rate their performances basically. So how well do they perform on particular task on that particular day but on a scale of one to ten. So, for example, they're going to correlate what they saw in their diary to how well they felt that they performed. Um, so the main thing here, the main conclusions is that they found that um, the uplifts that they had, I don't know, for example, um, one of their patients saying thank you or the patient's family 
giving them flowers or something like that. They felt that the uplifts overweighed their um, um, their hassles, basically. So um, if in terms of um, how we implement that in society, for example, like a general conclusion that um, in a workplace we must have a certain amount of uplifts, otherwise hassles will get to us and make us all down and we're not going to perform as well in work. Again, criticisms, population validity, they're just nurses. You're going to see how I'm going to be using this and writing it um, in lecture three, um, 4B. And in strength, use of questionnaires, etc. Same thing. Have you, have you noticed that this, um, the last research, I'm kind of like using the same strength. It's fine. No one's going to check it. It's absolutely fine. It just means less for you to remember, which is the key thing, really. OK, so that concludes lecture four on daily hassles. Um, as a source of stress, please look at um, the next lecture, which is 4A, which is going to be looking at typical examination questions and how you can use this information to answer them.